Are we recording? Beans oh, she and shit. Playing. She got to you got to pick me wiggly. Yeah. She, that's what she go. And she bring that shit back home. Oh, so yo, yo, <laughs> she got all the countryside. Countryside. Yeah, Lombard. I don't know if you know ah, Lombard. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Damn. No wonder why Lombard. we said pickly wiggly. That's all <laughs> that's I had to deep. hear. <laughs> that's all I had to hear. My nigga said you ever been pickly wiggly. Man, yeah. I'm telling you, going down there for the summer. Mm-hmm. It was. I'm glad I had that experience because it's like dirt roads and shit. And I go yeah. back home, it's alleys, it's fast paced down there, it's slow, it's hogs and shit, chickens running around. Facts. As a kid, I was like, what the fuck? This shit is different. Yeah. <laughs> nah, facts. Yeah. What do you prefer now, though? Like, do you prefer, like, where you at? I prefer home or up north because it's more fast paced. Like, when I was in Charlotte, mm -hmm. I was thinking, can I see myself living here? And then I was like, it's a little too slow for me. Charlotte is nice, though. It's real it's nice. Slow. But, like, when I would go uptown, it was, I don't know. It was just too slow for me. I guess too slow for what I was used to. Yeah. DC is. Fast You pace. get on a train. Like, everybody yeah. walking fast. You know how to maneuver through people. It's yeah. just, I just was used to that. Right. Mm -hmm. Art of the finesse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no lie, though. People, I feel like I've noticed that in the same thing, too. Just, like, traveling. And, yeah. like, geographically, you can really see the speeds of different areas. Definitely. And it's, like, the more down south you get, the more, like, spread out, a little bit slower. You mm -hmm. feel me? Because it's more land. Yeah. But everything up north is close together. It's condensed. Definitely. So, niggas is, like... Fast. And then, you learn, like you said, you learn how to get them look. That's why Lil' Kim did this. Because <laughs> she was dodging niggas from up north. You feel me? A lot of people don't know that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't never seen <laughs> nah, it like that. <laughs> but you know what I do like about down south, though? What's that? The southern hospitality. That's a fact. I love that It's shit. different. I love it. But everybody not everybody like, like that. You know what I'm saying? I guess what I used to see growing up, I guess, again, being in Lomberg, deep, deep country. Yeah. Every time I went out with my grandmother somewhere, everybody knew each other. Name, last. They knew their mm -hmm. full name, too. Mm -hmm. First and last. Then everybody's Facts. friendly and just her. Yeah. She got that deep southern hospitality. So even at home in D.C., being a kid going to the store with her, she's speaking to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Some motherfuckers want to speak back because they city people. But a lot of people like, hey, how you doing? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. It's just like, I'm like, damn. Like, I love that about her because yeah. she comes from down south of and going down there, you see it so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you pointed that out. That's crazy. But listen, I don't have an introduction. Okay. We just vibe into it. I'm going to let you introduce yourself, though. Okay. Then we're going to get into it. Let's do it. What's Come up, y'all? This is Brown Sugar Productions yeah. from D.C. Mm -hmm. um, music producer, entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, representation of the women in the music industry. Wake it up. All that good stuff. Wake it up. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so first question that I ask people who pull up is mm -hmm. three questions. Yeah. You can answer at your own pace, okay? Mm-hmm. Who are you, which what we've explained. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Mm -hmm. And why do you do it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, wherever you would like to start. Who am I again? Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll explain some characteristics about me. Um, oh, let's do it. I'm goofy. Okay. I'm a boss. Come on. I'm an alpha woman. Come on. I'm spiritual. Yeah. I'm driven. Come on. Uh, very determined. Yeah. Uh, I'm see. I'm gonna leave it like that. I ain't gonna get y'all too much. Not too much. Not too, like much not too much. Not too much. Ah man. Um, what they weren't ready. One? What do you do? What do I do? Yeah. I'm a producer, not a beat maker. It's a difference. It's a difference. Break down the difference real quick if Got you don't you. mind. So a beat maker, um, they pretty much like just create and make a bunch of beats and kind of mm. just just send it out to the artist. They don't really have any say so in the whole process of mm, creating a record. Right. With which is like a music producer, like I'm gonna make the beat. Yeah. Even if I send it to the artist, I'm gonna be in the studio with you. Come on. Like we're gonna craft this jump together. Yeah. I'm gonna have my input on what I hear about it. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna still be there when we're doing the mixing process. Like I'm Fact. also input what I hear. We should do this, do that, do that. Yeah. Then once it drops, I'm also gonna be a part of the promotion. Like Come I'm a part on. of the whole process because I'm a producer. Like if I yeah. got that ear, I wanna be able to make sure the artist, you know, understands what I see as well as them, too. Yeah. Like, we're going to put this thing together. Like, I might be at the damn interview with the artist. You know I what I mean? I love that. Like, I love that. Yeah, it's a whole production thing with a beat maker, of course. They just, they're not really a part of all of that. 
Got you. They'll just send that shit out and let the artists do what they do and let it be. Yo, that's crazy. I love the way you explain it. So basically, a beat maker is there for the moment or creates moments. Yeah. Producers create experiences. Hell yeah. Got you. Yeah. I fuck with that. Okay, mm -hmm. so we got producer. Yep. Wake it up. Entrepreneur. Come on. Um, Talk your shit. You know, again, like a representation of women in the male dominated industry. Right. The brand, Brown Sugar Productions, we just empower and embolden women and girls of all colors mm. and of all ethnicities to be bold and to strive in any industry that they're in. But, you know, yeah. definitely male dominated industry because you don't see, I mean, there, there are plenty of female producers but you don't really see them that much mm. and there are different like um positions within the music industry you got executives and you got women that is like, executives and all of that but right. it's different for us because it's like again it's male dominated so when we coming in we have to be on our p's and q's we Ready. gotta know everything we talking about so people can take us seriously yeah so that's you know another thing that i represent also, Brown Sugar Productions is about health and wellness, yes. fitness, yes. all of that good stuff. Yeah. Um, we're about community. Mm. I've done my own community events back in D.C. Wake it up. You know what Come I mean? Come on, like, slight we work. We give bags away to the kids and shit. Yeah. We, um, you know, we just be outside. Yeah. Like, we outside with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for yeah. real, for real. I recently just started, like, pulling up to different places and making beats with kids. Word. And showing them how the process goes and this and that. So, yeah. we outside. That's what brown sugar productions is about come on i love that so mm -hmm. with being outside with brown sugar productions mm -hmm. why do you do it why do i do it mm -hmm. you know what wake it up like i really i ain't gonna hold you and i'm gonna tell you a quick story mm -hmm. this is when i first found that i wanted to make beats we love stories <laughs> i was like 13 right yeah I was in class and my teacher was like, Mr. Pendleton, I never forget Mr. Pendleton. Pendleton. He was like, What do y'all want to be when y'all grow up? Because we was just rowdy and shit, everybody yeah. talking and shit. It was, yeah. just, it was chaotic. Yeah. He was like, What do y'all want to be when y'all grow up? I swear, something did like this. It was like, Raise your hand and say, Music producer. Damn. And I was like, Then I was like, Music producer? Like, I was mm. so unsure. I've never even thought about being a producer. But low that key, moment. you were sure though. Where did low that come key, from? God. Mm. I'm telling you, like, he literally was in my ear. He was like, say music producer. So God was the top. Because you got to think, at that moment, mm. I barely knew what a music producer was. Right. I just knew, like, whatever you hear on the radio, the music behind the artist is what the producer did. That's mm. all I knew at the time. That was, like, my definition at the time. Right. So, you know, from there, it was like, damn, like, I think this is what I'm meant to, do. to do. This is my purpose. And my yes. dad... Does music. I was always in the studio with him. Mm -hmm. Since like four years old up to like seven, oh, eight. Yeah. I was in that environment. Yeah. But again, I never was paying. I was young. I was never really paying. But you were still life. soaking it in, though. I was still somehow yeah. soaking that shit in. So it's yeah. like when God told me that, uh -huh. I was like, damn. I really fell in love with figuring out what music production was and just building my brand. It's like, yes. damn, this is this is what it is. This is my purpose. Yeah. This is, yeah. This got to be mm. it. So I want to expound more into what pops. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it comes to pops, right, going to those studio sessions and just soaking everything in, what were like some vivid pictures you remember? Because as a child, of course, you may not remember every detail, but when you foreshadow and look back on it, you have vivid yeah. Pictures. What were those vivid pictures for you? Bad. Walking into the basement area, right? Yeah. And then it's an open space. There's like a TV and a video game over here, Xbox, because the niggas was playing for sure. basketball and shit on the video game. Yeah. But then when you walk into the studio, I remember the walls was painted black. Mm. Then I remember signatures all over the walls. So like mm. all the artists in the city, whatever, that would come in, yeah. they would write their name on the wall. I remember that shit like, damn, like, look wow. at this. The walls is black. Yeah. But then, most importantly... I remember walking into the booth and Ooh. something happening with my ears. Because, you know, it's like the sound is condensed in there yeah. or whatever. I used to be like, damn, like, why it sounds so different in here? Yeah. That was those vivid, vivid moments I remember. Yeah. To this day. Damn, because sensory is important, my G. But mm -hmm. even remembering that and what we felt in those moments is crazy. Yeah. So transitioning from Pops, right, mm -hmm. and being there, let's go into you actually <clears throat> taking action mm -hmm. 
when it comes to knowing what you're destined for, mm -hmm. right? So take us there into that moment to where you started making your own beats, you started producing shit, but not only just music, but you know what I mean? Everything that you got going on now. Take us back when you first planted those seeds. But so after class, when mm -hmm. I figured that shit out, I went home and I was like, Dad, yeah. I think I want to be a music producer. When yeah. I said that nigga got so excited. Yeah. It's like he believed before I believed. Because yeah. he really was like, oh shit, she really saying this. Because he was, again, he was already already into music. Yeah. So from there, he bought me my first keyboard, Korg M3 keyboard. It cost like 1200 Word. And I was sitting there like, damn, he really like putting money into this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, shit, I want to do this. So yeah. that keyboard, I made so many beats on and I was just teaching myself and teaching myself yeah. everything and experimenting for, I mean, at that moment from 13, mm. well, of course, 13 to now, but right. it's just like those moments was just learning my sound and learning yeah. everything. And then YouTube every single weekend, like mm. just learning a bunch of shit. That was really the beginning stage mm. of everything. So what was the drive? You know what I mean? I think the drive was really like when God told me that I was interested. Mm. He was like, you know, when he said music producer, I was like, wow, okay. Yeah. What is a music producer? Mm -hmm. And then started to, when I'm starting to um, experiment, I'm like, oh, I actually like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just making and making and making and making. But it's just like, mm -hmm. I remember when I made my first beat that I really, really liked. Yeah. And you know how music just hits you differently. That's a fact. I was like, oh, man. Like, I'm, I fell in love with that beat. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm about to be doing this for real, for yeah. real. It's like this hitting, it's like hitting my soul for real. But technically, you fell in love with yourself. That yeah, that too. You know what I mean? Because yeah. when you really think about it, just even being a sponge with pops, and then him believing in you, mm -hmm. right? Because first and foremost, just even that alone, like having somebody believe in you in that early stage. Before I even believe. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. That's valuable. That's important. <clears throat> yep. What's crazy is the drive and the motivation to where for you going back to falling in love with yourself you're challenging yourself mm -hmm. right because god think about god is what a lot of people get misconstrued they feel like god is the type of motherfucker to be like here you go here you go here you go mm -hmm. right nah it's already there you just have to see it yeah so when you had that moment of <laughs> you feel me that's when it clicked yeah so what i wanted to ask was when it comes to finally realizing your purpose right mm -hmm. how did you operate into becoming an entrepreneur while doing what it is you love great question yeah so Really, when I first started, and remember I told you about how the name came about, but I don't yeah. think I said it on camera. My shout out my great aunt Gladys. Come on. Late great aunt Gladys. Rest in peace to her. Rest in she peace. She gave me the name Brown Sugar. Yeah. So when I was so adamant and so serious about this, I'm like everybody was like, girl, bye. You know, music <laughs> producer, whatever. Yeah. So but yeah. then even people was like, I don't like that name. And they used to laugh at the name and everything. For real? That used to give me a whole drive. Mm. Like a full drive. I'm like, all right, bet. So that's where the alpha come in. Somewhat. I mean, I think that's really already in me. But still, Alpha is a byproduct of you, though. Mm -hmm. Just you kind of channeling that. Yeah. Gotcha. In a way. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like the entrepreneurial aspect, I think that really popped in in, in school, though. Mm -hmm. When I went to Johnson C. Smith from Charlotte, shout out to JCSU. Come on. I went to JCSU. Yeah. I went for music business and technology because I was like, I really want to understand what it is I'm getting myself into. Like, if Oh, so you was locked and loaded from the jump. Yeah. Like, it was no detour, no nothing. Like, you no. was like, I'm about to find out everything. Got it. And I think it was a reason why he tapped me on the shoulder at that age. He was really putting like a focus on me. Like you're fact. not about to be getting distracted by any other thing. Like mm -hmm. this is what it is. So from 13 until now, it's like, yeah. this is what it is. Yes. So by the time college came, it was like, all right, I want to go to school for music business. Like yeah. God, I don't give a fuck. Music, whatever. Yeah. So I was like, I want to make sure I'm understanding what I'm getting into, at least the basics before I get into it. Yes. But even that spiraled into being an entrepreneur. Brown Sugar Productions is a brand 
brand and then yeah. the mission statement again mm. is empowering and emboldening women mm. in a male dominated industry yes so from there it's like i got merch now i Come got on. clothes yeah. i got lighters yeah. i got the whole website yes. i got interviews like this like Come you can on. go to my website and literally read my story mm -hmm. check my music out yeah. check i can't wait interview. till our thumbnail <laughs> pop up in the links i peep no i told you i peeped i peeped yeah, yeah. so i think that's where like the entrepreneurial you said i came from for mm. sure okay i have a question mm -hmm. Man, i'm sorry these questions no, it's just good. we flowing in conversation you feel me the vibe that i'm getting from you right is multi-dimensional versatility mm. right so having that moment of knowing what your purpose is mm -hmm. how did you make sure that you didn't adapt a one-dimensional mindset of saying i'm just going to do music production right Ooh. to where now remember how you said the entrepreneur community and cultivating that brand to where you can literally monetize off of your own lifestyle. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, how did that come about for you? It just flowed. Yeah, I it's didn't natural. To you. It's it wasn't natural. like I was like, I want to have a clothing brand. It was like, I was already stylish as hell since yeah. elementary. Like, I was always being best dressed yeah. in the class and shit. Yeah. Like, so yeah. for me, it's like, Picking back and off of that, the clothes, I started mm -hmm. doing my own sweatsuits and shit in school. And niggas was like, damn, that's yeah. your brand? I want one. Yeah. Like, I want to buy one. Yeah. So now it's like, I'm selling that. Mm -hmm. So for that, it's like, it's already a part of me. Yeah. Like, the clothes shit, I'm already, like, real On stylish. It. I be into that already. I get that from yeah. my mother, for real, for real. Like, I'm yeah. into that. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, all them different aspects other than the music is mm -hmm. already a part of who... I want to say Deshaun is, because yeah. Brown Sugar's the alter ego. Right. But it's already just a part of who I am. So everything was just like organic and mm. natural and just flowed and just spread it amongst the stuff just how mm. it was supposed to. Word. So when it comes to Brown Sugar mm -hmm. and Deshaun, mm -hmm. right? As you said, Brown Sugar is just a byproduct of Deshaun, correct? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, who would you say Deshaun is? Great question. Deshaun is this only child mm. that grew up with no siblings Word. and spoiled as hell. Come I ain't on. even going to lie. Wake it up. And quiet and shy yes. and just to herself and cool as hell. She's just who is, she is who she is. Yeah. Don't fuck with her. Because right. if you fuck with her, there's a whole nother side that's going to come out. I'm a Taurus. I'm a bull. Come it's on. like you can already tell you don't need one tap into that side of come me. On. But it's just like other than that, I'm real cool. I'm real chill. I vibe with everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's Deshaun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like water. <laughs> you know I just saying? flow. Yeah, like water. Yeah. Like water. You pour you in the cup, you become the cup. Voss, nigga, bowl, whatever the fuck you want. High quality at that. Hey, but it's also, you humble enough to pour the water in the joint to make some noodles too. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, either hey. way. Either way. You know what's crazy? You just said that. They used to call me noodles in elementary school. Why? I love noodles. But listen. What flavor? <sighs> That's hard to say. Roast beef. The roast beef. Why? You like all that seasoning and that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if you think about it, the pack for the roast beef and roast chickens, it give you more. And more, <laughs> bro. Yeah, you was, you was in it for the south. <laughs> you was in it for the south. Hey, no boo. But no, nah, I used to, man, I be making some bomb noodles, man. Yeah. I mean, like, I be slicing my jokes. I got some special seasoning. You be adding the egg. Of course. You be adding the cheese? No. You never had the cheese That's with the noodles? That's the one thing I don't do. Why? Oh, lactose? No, no, it's not even that. Like, uh, I've never been attracted to the cheese with the noodles. Just give me some hot sauce word. or some pepper. What or... kind of hot sauce? Texas Pete. Yeah, you you really <laughs> have roots in North Carolina, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Texas Pete. Give me some Texas Pete. It's crazy because externally, DC all the way. Yeah, but, but in internally, yeah. you got a Carolina bit. You a little Carolina bit. It's real southern, Come on. man. Shout out to Texas Pete for those who don't know out there that originated in Wilson, North Carolina. You dig what I'm saying? A lot of people thought it was from Texas, I but didn't know that. yeah, it originated in Wilson, North Carolina. Dang. Yeah. Shout out to Wilson. But great marketing with the Texas Pete and the Cowboy. You feel me? <laughs> like great marketing. 
But um, back mm-hmm. to the superstar. Dig what I'm saying? Um, another question I wanted to ask too. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, we flung. We yeah, flung. Nah, we, we freestyling. One thing I've noticed with you, as a person now, right? Of mm-hmm. course, but as from what I saw with Brown Sugar Productions, mm-hmm. um, I've noticed how you really played the game to your advantage. Mm. Now, what I mean by that is uh, being whom you are and understanding the game, it's easy to say you have to do this, you have to do that, or you have to do these Mm -hmm. in order to be seen, heard, or whatever. One thing I've noticed about you was that you embrace who you are So, as a producer, you don't see producers who can add personality within their brand. If we're being completely honest, nowadays we're kind of seeing and seeing the experimental field of people with branding when it comes to production. Because a lot of producers and engineers didn't get the proper credit they deserve at once. So, now that they're finally getting the recognition... The ball's in y'all's court on however y'all promote yourselves. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of selling authenticity authentically. You dig Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So what I've noticed with you is you get the sense of personality when it comes to the imagery, when it comes to the actual projects. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, for you, was that ever intentional per se? Or was that kind of like learned as you kept going? What was? Uh, just creating. Damn, you got a. That's a good. Question. Yeah, I was like, with like, yeah. That's a good question. My fault. <laughs> okay, so Not like, good. for to ask that question, let's talk about branding, right? Per okay, se. Branding. Okay. Yeah. So for branding purposes, was that always intentional on saying, okay, I'm going to utilize by showcasing my personality, who I am, and add a little, you know, razzle dazzle with the imagery of like the physicality too. Yeah. You know, but in your own way. Right. Not in the typical way. Yeah. Dig what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Was that intentional or was that kind of like learned? It just again it flowed. Everything flowed. So you ain't lying when you say everything. No, I'm just not. Flowed. I swear to God, I'm not lying. Like yeah. everything just happened how it happened. I even at first I didn't even think that Brown Sugar Productions would be like a whole entity business thing. I just was like, This is just what I'm doing with the beats but Yeah. Everything flowed again like a part of who I am being stylish, so it was like, All right, bet, like mm. I wanna do photo shoots now, you yeah. know what I mean? And then I've quickly realized like I remember when I was in college, mm. I think in a freshman year, I remember God was like, You gonna make it Mm. And that shit hit me real hard. I was like, ooh, like, you know what I mean? So that's yeah. when I just went real hard with it. I was like, all right, bad. Like, yeah. I realized I had a whole package. Mm. Like, I'm talented, but I also got the looks. Yeah. Also got the personality. And then now this has really developed because, again, Deshaun is shy. Right. So with Deshaun being shy, sometimes it can bleed into the brown sugar being shy. Yeah. But now Deshaun has grown to be way more confident through growth. Mm. So now brown sugar is mm. even more confident because this is like, yeah, like, all right, mm. you know what I mean? But, like, really through life experiences of just growing and growing is just how everything really just got better for me mm. you know overall as a person and everything yeah mm-hmm. that's what it's truly about at the end of the day yeah and i like how you broke that down by saying once you learn they shine that's when it poured into brown sugar yeah. versus brown sugar pouring into they shine yeah, nah, you know what i'm saying because yeah. sometimes people can get lost in that shit mm-hmm. so with everything flowing and i believe you you I know truly what i'm because i'm the same way i believe you it's like whatever we put our minds to we we do, but when you know your purpose, mm-hmm. you know your fucking purpose. So with that being said, what are you afraid of, right? What am I afraid of? Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm. I'm not afraid of. At least at this point, I'm not afraid of anything. Why? I do remember. Um, because my dad was so excited about it, like in my earlier stages of making BC, he'd be like, You need we need to get you here, Dad. We need to get you in front of mm. Master P, this, that, this, that. Yeah. And I'd be in my head like, I don't think I'm ready for that. Mm. Like I would I just I would be honest with myself, like, I don't know if I'm really 
ready to be in front of like Jay Z and shit and playing mm. beats in front of them. My beats was some trash back yeah, then. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, facts. At least I thought, but they facts. were. They they was really some trash. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> always trash when we start off. Whatever we do. Yeah. yeah. So you know he would say that because he's seeing overall. Yeah. He ain't even looking at right now. He looking at yeah. what the fuck this shit gonna become. Wow. So he like da 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 da, and I'm like. Oh, being honest with myself, like, I don't know. Yeah. But now, when you ask me now, mm -hmm. I'm ready for all that shit. Yeah. I'm ready to sit in front of Jay, put P. Diddy in front of me, put mm -hmm. an artist in front of me, Lotto, whoever, Master P. I'm ready to talk. Yeah. I got the talk. Mm -hmm. I got the music to back it up. I got the confidence to back it up. Yeah. Again, it's that growth that happened and yeah. it needed to happen. Yeah. All of that shit needed to happen. It really. They say when you go to college and shit, you learn yourself. You learn your friends. You mm -hmm. learn who you fuck with and don't fuck with. Yeah. And you learn yourself. That that happens for real. me. Yeah. By the time I graduated, I have I really learned a lot about myself. Mm. And I needed that experience. Yeah. You know what I noticed about you listening to you? What? You have stages. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And the stages is like development. Whether yeah. that's development for the production, yeah. development for life, uh, development for people and social skills, yeah. development for internal work, you know what I'm saying? So when it came to how you said earlier as far as Deshaun being shy, mm -hmm. right, how did you work on becoming more open and trusting yourself? Because that's where it starts, mm. you feel me? Being put into them uncomfortable situations. Because Pops put you on early with that, correct? Yeah. Or would you say you put yourself in those uncomfortable... I did. Okay, I did. speak on it. Speak on yeah, it. Yeah, like, I ain't gonna lie. When I was in college, I had social anxiety and shit. Mm. I Why? dealt with... I don't know. I Are you just, know. like, figuring it out once you got to college, per se? Or was Kinda. it always lingering there, but you just didn't really, like... People? It was a little lingering in high school. It was weird, because, like, after... Okay, so elementary and middle, I was in school mm. with the same friends and people for a long oh, time. Gosh. So once I went to high school... And you like routine? Routine. I think so. It's a part of a tour. I don't like shit that changed too much. Yeah. I don't like a quick switch up. Yeah. I don't really like spontaneous shit either. Right. But it was just like, I grew up with these people from, for what, fucking 10 years or so. Yeah. So going to yeah. high school with a whole new group of people, I don't know. I was real standoffish a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Like I opened up at times and had yeah. fun and just got out my head. Yeah. But I was in my head and stuff a lot. So especially in school, again, I still had fun. It wasn't like mm. always like that. But like if I go to a little kickback or function, if I walk in by myself, I'm like, oh, my heart is beating. Mm. And it's like social anxiety. I don't know where that shit came from. I really don't. But yeah. Eventually, I overcame that, and when I came home from college, mm. I, I started working at this studio, yeah. and I was being put on the spot, and that shit helped me. Like, yeah. I make a beat, and yeah. I think that'd be some trash, and it might really be, but I'm yeah. in a room full of people, and that shit's some trash. Yeah. That shit helped me, though. It's yeah. like, all right, look, like, you need right. these experiences to Come get on. better. Yeah. Like, you in here, yeah. this beat is not hitting, girl, yeah. but... Now, let me make it be in front of some people. Ready. I'm confident. It's yeah. no more anxiety. It's mm. no more overthinking. Because mm. I had to go through that shit to get better. Yeah. I had to be around a bunch of niggas and be uncomfortable making a beat. To yeah. now be around a bunch of niggas and be like, I don't know fuck about who thinking whatever. Like, I'm yeah. in the zone right now. Yeah. Yeah, I had to go through that shit. Mm. So, how do, you, how do you differentiate moving now when it comes to being in the zone and like, having that type of dedication, right? Mm -hmm. How are you able to categorize people and things in your life? For mm -hmm. instance, for example, right? Let's say, boom, what it is that you do, your purpose, priority list, that's number one, right? Now it could come to other factors, family, significant other, friends, uh, shit, if you have a pet or kids mm -hmm. or uh you know what i mean like hobbies whatever how do you separate it pretty much yeah you know? how do you separate everything on your journey speaking for yourself that's a great question um so i think what's best or what has helped me is having like a, a schedule mm. so like even with work even my day job i have a really fun day job by the way because this is a hobby of mine come on this is off topic but I love gardening and growing food. Nah, this is on topic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, this is on topic. I we love, talking about you. Yeah, I yeah. love doing shit like that. So mm. 
I manifested having a job that gave me the flexibility to do that, but not take up my whole day. Yes. So it was like, I could go to work. Some days I'd be done by 10 a.m. Yes. Some days I'm just done by 3, which is the regular time. Yeah. Then I'll go work out, work on my mental, work on my body. Yeah. Then, But but then within those little stages, I'm talking to family, I'm conversating. I might go to my grandma's house just to see what's up with her. Yeah. Then by the end of the day, after I shower or whatever, mm-hmm. I'm making beats. Come on. It's, I'm researching. I'm yeah. emailing people. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. So it's like having that schedule and consistent schedule. It works out. It's not like, you know, mm. my family calling me, oh, I'm in the studio right now. I can't talk. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It ain't like always like that. It's just like having a schedule. This time I work. This time I do this. This right. time I do that. Right. And that consistency helps with the balance. Mm. Yeah. For me, at least. Mm, for sure. For sure. Wow. Mm-hmm. Nah, that's key. That's key. Mm-hmm. That's key. So let me ask this. There's a young black woman, mm-hmm. right? She comes up to you, brown sugar, <laughs> but she know you know you, so she's probably gonna be like, "They shine," <laughs> right? Yeah. She come up to you. I love what you do, everything you embody, what you went through to become who you are. What do I do to get to where you at? What you gonna tell her? Bad. All right, first, be serious about what you're saying. Mm. Believe in yourself Mm. and put the work in. So whatever you feel like you need to do to accomplish that, you need to do that. But then even if you're coming up to me, I need to see that you're serious. I don't need you to have everything figured out, Mm -hmm. but I need to see that you're already working towards whatever you want. Because really, when you want some shit, you're not waiting for nobody. Mm. Even if you need, even if if you feel like you need a handout or like a mentor or something, Mm. you're not waiting for nobody. You already going to come with something. Yeah. So I need to see that you are already coming with something. But again, mm-hmm. just be like, it's a feeling though thing. Like for me, mm-hmm. when I figured out I wanted to do it, yeah. ain't nobody had to tell me to do shit. Ain't nobody Facts. had to tell me to research Facts. music. Ain't nobody had to tell me to research how to play this chord, how to read this. Right. I was doing that shit on my own because yeah. I was real serious and determined mm. to figure this shit out. So it was like, I got to at least see you got that. Mm. Because I don't want you to depend upon me yeah. to help you for your shit. I want mm. you. I want to help you. I want to give what I give, but I want to see you putting in the work too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Meet you halfway. Yeah. Just all the like way. us with God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Slight work. Slight work. Come on. So let me. <laughs> um. I just want to give you the opportunity as well, yo. Just kind of just to talk your shit. If I'm being real. Um. And what I mean by that is. As you stated before, even in your mission statement, but not only with Brown Sugar Productions, but with Deshaun as well, how you carry yourself and how you move, right? Um, We already know what kind of industry this is, right? Mm -hmm. So how important to you is it for just that representation alone? representation of being like a a female or what? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, like, when you really think about it, like, black of course but you're you you already know who you targeting you already know who you doing it for yeah so speak to them you know what i mean no for real like for me i don't like again i'm going off of everything that it's it's about really when i started having this connection with god right Mm. because before i knew him i feared him i didn't i was scared of god i didn't know who he was but once I connected with him, like, he was telling me everything. And I'm like, all right, bet. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's just like now I really see myself being an impact in the music industry. Period. Like, you got to understand, Missy Elliott is uh, really, you know what I mean? Like, she, my, come right. on, man. And then she from DMV. She from Virginia side. That's a fact. So we all kind of close in, you know, proximity. Yeah. But it's like her. It's like Alicia Keys. Yeah. Like her, the artist, her too. Like, mm-hmm. just seeing the women just be dominant. Yeah. That shit is motivation to me. And y'all really running this shit if we being for real, for yeah, real. Yeah, like, it's really, we really impacting So I'm like. Yeah. Whenever my time come, which I know is soon, mm-hmm. it's going to come at the right time. 
Oh, for it's sure. It's going to be the right moment. And yeah. I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in full force. It's right. like niggas going to know exactly who I am. Yeah. I'm going to come in, whatever, making certain type of beats and just impacting the industry. And then for me, I remember I had somebody ask me this. It's like, when you listen to my music, yeah. it's not really always the hip shit that you hear. Mm. Like, my music come deep-rooted. Mm. Like, when whatever I make is coming with, from within. Mm -hmm. So it's like... I feel like I might be one of those people that's going to bring shit back, like, mm. to the for real era, to the Timberland era, like, you know what mm. I mean? As far as music goes, like, making real classics, yeah. production-wise, yeah. I feel like I'm really going to be one of those people who's like, I ain't even know no cocky shit. That's just really just what I be feeling and really just sitting back and thinking about, like, yeah. what do I, how do I want to impact? people yeah. and women in the industry and these things that really be popping up yeah but you're not going to do it you're already doing it it's a difference definitely yeah you're already doing it yeah. so just make sure when it comes to manifestation mm -hmm. and you do that self-talk mm -hmm. you hear it now you're not getting there it's not going to come <laughs> yeah you hear it now it's my happening. nigga it's yeah happening. it's already here yes. so um i wanted to talk specifically about now before i ask mm -hmm. is trapped in the days your most recent that you dropped? Yes, yeah, the volume two. Volume the two. Album, yeah. Yes. So, um, when you were just speaking on your production as far as bringing it back and bringing that bridge, mm -hmm. I will have to say Trapped in the Days, volume two, mm -hmm. was a great example of that. Mm -hmm. um, now, on that sense of how you broke it down, that we're specifically speaking on what we grew up on right mm -hmm. but in trapped in the days volume two what i've noticed how is you took different elements and made it modernized kind of mm, but yeah. like still had your own twang to it you know yeah. what i'm saying and um i cannot remember the track names but i remember track two because that set the tone definition two definition two that set the tone for sure um, shout out to the artist, you know what I'm saying? That young E-Class, e shout out yeah, to Young E-Class, e all day, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, track number two stood out to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the last track stood out to me as well, mm -hmm. and the second to last. Chrome and Leather. Chrome, no, before Chrome and Leather, because Chrome and Leather Heartbreak was... Heartbreak 2. Yes, Heartbreak 2. Yeah. Now, I the reason why I say that, because with those... Like, the whole project itself. Mm -hmm. But I really kind of got the ambiance of the brand Brown Sugar Productions mm -hmm. as far as the experience of how we were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. What story were you creating when it comes to Trapped in the Days Volume 2? Mm, get you. So, really what that was, like... As far as production wise, mm -hmm. on my side, yeah. every beat that's on that project, mm -hmm. I was literally trapped in a moment making that jump. Mm -hmm. Every it's not one beat on there that was just like a quick whatever beat, just this that. Each beat was like when I made it and when I heard it, mm -hmm. it hit me, and I'm like, mm -hmm. damn, like this. Cause really with me, I'm like a, I'm a soul person. Like I want, yeah. I want to, I want to touch your soul when you listen to my music. It's felt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like my goal. I want to yeah. inspire the youngest to the oldest of age. Yeah. That's really what like a classic is. Mm -hmm. Like if you got a four year old dancing to your shit and you got an 80 year old dancing to your shit, mm -hmm. that's the goal. I want yes. that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that was really like, it's like everything I put on this project yeah. gotta be the one. Nah, for sure. And then it's just worked out because every time I even played the beat for the artists that was on each drum, they felt they felt me mm. through the beat. And that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. With lyrics, right? Was that more so on their end or your direction? More so on their end. Now wow. the heartbreak jump though, because heartbreak one is on sugar print. I don't know if you peeped that. Heartbreak. I did. Yeah. No, I did. Yeah. I did. I, <laughs> I'm just glad I'm not going crazy because yeah, I saw nah. it. Okay, okay. Heartbreak Instrumental was on Sugar Print. Right. So when I presented that to Lay and Frank Blunt, yeah. they was like, so what are, you, what are you hearing? And I'm like, oh, they was like, why did you name it Heartbreak? Yeah. And I was like, 
it feels so good break my heart yeah. and then that's the hook it feels so good yeah, it's breaking break my, heart. my heart so that was yeah. my first time really having like a writing impact because yes. that's really what i felt from the beat but everything else it was like it's just amazing it's it just really like the is. artists hear they hear me through the music and i bro i peep that shit yeah that's just like, crazy they were really telling your story but their story but every like same time so you really just be flowing out here. That shit is amazing to me how they just really just was able to like, because sometimes I send them the beat. Yeah. So they'll probably write something at home. And when we link up, it's like, all right, this is what I came up with. And I'm like, damn, mm. that's like even some shit I was thinking. It's yeah. like, it's crazy how I ain't even got to say the words. Yeah. I'm going to let you hear the music and you you, you just going to feel me through the music. That yeah. shit is amazing to me. That's how I know yes. I'm really gifted with this shit, man. Because I can shit. speak to you through the music. Talk your shit. <laughs> Talk your shit. Yeah. Speaking of music, what speaks to you? As far as what? Like your taste in music. I love jazz. Mm. I love R and B and soul, like mm. Erica Badu, Jill Scott, Donnell Jones, music soul mm. child, like all that type shit hit different for me. I really grew up on that though, for yeah. real, for real. So that's why I'm really into the soul. But man, all that shit, yeah. I'm I'm just really soulful and then jazzy as well. Like when I was in college, I was in the jazz ensemble. Yeah. So you know what I mean. Like you play instruments. Keys. Come on. Yeah. Wow. Play the keys. So yeah, being in the jazz ensemble, I was really yeah. I was mm, mm, yeah. like yeah. playing them chords and shit, freestyling. Stop and all playing. That. <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's love. So like, bro, when Jill Scott in the way hit that grits. <laughs> legendary yeah. and fun fact too it's crazy that you say jazz one of my favorite albums yo is miles davis bitches brew Ooh. when he introduced like jazz fusion uh -huh. and like that transition period uh -huh, uh -huh. bruh crazy Love that shit. Like, but I can like literally just listen to jazz survive. and just be like now my dad again he's really like this very vibrant yeah. goofy and huge um personality person like yeah. we use the same title app right because i use the title for my music yeah and one day he was like you got this jazz boo -doo 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 shit on here like he's really like just goofy as fuck like that he don't get that shit though <laughs> like, he did, like you will not, not catch the jazz he's like the fuck is you listening how are you listening to this shit yeah. i'm like man i will listen and be so content yeah. but he's like I remember being with him. He's like Eminem, mm. Jay Z, Fifty mm. Cent, like Wayne, like mm. all that type of shit. He really yeah. like on the gangster rap shit. Yeah. Rick Ross, all that. Like, yeah. but see, I don't know where I get this jazz shit from. Mm. It's definitely not him. Yeah, nah, <laughs> He's not fact. listening to no jazz. That's a fact. I don't know where that side come from, but man, I can listen to some jazz and be so content and calm and just in my element. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's like a sense of control in a sense. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it helps you be present. Mm -hmm. Like hearing the sounds, um, you kind of have this like experience internally to where now you kind of have a map to where you can reflect, whether if it's on the past, if you want to think about what you got going on now mm -hmm. or what you want to work towards for the future. It helps slow this time down. That's a good way to look at it. You yeah, know what I'm you actually right about where it's that. like, ooh, okay. Now I have these moments to where I can be cool. You know what I mean? I feel like when it comes to the gangster shit, like you you could really tell a lot about a person what they listen to. You feel yeah, me? And it. you know, with your pops being goofy and shit, it's like a lot of energy. You know what <laughs> I mean? So the same energy he's putting out, he's gonna need it back. Yeah. So with music it's felt. So when you get that same energy back, it's just recycling at this point. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's spiritual. Yeah. And speaking of that, like, do you feel that music is spiritual? Oh, a hundred percent. Speak on it. Hundred percent. What did I hear Nipsey say? Shout out to Nip. Yeah, man. he's man. I can't really completely quote him on that, but he says something. Music is spiritual, like what you say. The power of the tongue can manifest. Or oh, really, you know what? What music say? is universal. Oh, that's it brings a fact. people yeah, together. Yeah. A lot of things do, but yeah. music yeah. brings people together from different ethnicities. We can speak two different languages, but when we hear something, you feel it. we feel it. We mm. coming together. We in unity off that shit because yes. it's just the way it just brings you together and make you feel. It's a feeling. Right. It's a hell of a feeling. I think that's really why I'm into because I'm like a deep person anyway. Yeah. Very deep and shit. You know what I mean? Right. So. <laughs> Not slight shit. 
<laughs> Slight shit. <laughs> like, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just a real, like, again, like, you know, I was quiet. I'm quiet. And to mm. myself, I'm the only child. So yeah. it's just like, I be really thinking a lot and shit like that. So yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it, Incense though. Incense burning. Come on. Erica Badu on the vibe. Not the bag, lady. Hey. Carrying all the bags. You know what I mean? Okay. Slight shit. I'll fuck with that. I don't think you drink your drink. Oh Stop. my god, I feel like I'm the only one. Don't ever play me like that. Oh look, I think we almost at the same level. I'm a little. Nah, you definitely more. Oh nah, you got less than me. So yeah. Let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Yo, she just tried to more. play me right. So I didn't even see you drink it. I was like, when did he drink it? That's smooth. What you say, like water? Like water, like, like aqua. Water. Come on. Alkaline only. It's Let's get it. <laughs> Free game. Okay, so when it comes to the question I've asked about what would you tell the young black woman, right? Yeah. Who came up to you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw down the reverse card on Uno, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Throwing down the reverse card. Instead of talking to the young black woman who came up to you, what advice would you give to young you i knew you was gonna ask that wow Ooh. um how you know but don't have an answer no i got it i got so much <laughs> i got so much to say i'm no, like i want to dim it down a no, little bit don't dim it down damn um no nah, be you break it down don't however you want think mm. Don't worry about what nobody else thinks of you and what you got going on. Be firm in what you believe. Don't let nobody deter your vision or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, don't let nobody interfere with that. Yes. Um, Shit, man, so much. Yeah. Stand up for yourself, even in these situations when you may be the only female in the room and you got all these insecure ass niggas that just can't listen to a female and they Come can't on. take advice from you don't get discouraged by that shit Come fuck, on. fuck them like say what you gotta say stand firm on that yeah um it's gonna be a lot of people that is just not gonna believe in you a lot of people that's gonna say shit i know you sensitive come on don't let that shit get to you come on um so much, man. Really, that for the most part. Like, don't let nobody deter you. Don't let nobody, you know. They don't know. They don't know your vision. They don't know your relationship with God. They don't know what your purpose is, at yeah. least yet. Yeah. So whatever they get saying or whatever, let that shit go in one end out the other. If it ain't positive. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. I feel like you needed that moment real quick. I, you know? I low key did because I never really thought you know about about that for real for yeah. real it's like yeah that's Cause really what it is. i could tell like your motivation when you think about it is really like becoming the change that we want to see mm, us coming up huge. you dig what i'm saying so i just notice how your passion when it comes to speaking to the women you feel me and especially in this type of industry of how it runs and it's a bunch of weirdos. We're not even going to go there, though. You <laughs> dig what I'm saying? But seeing that now you're in a position of not only speaking about it, but showing through your action mm-hmm. and having that motivation to touch them, where did that come from? It came from you. It came from God. It came from the moments of you being a sponge, soaking this up and being like, dang, I wish I had somebody who I could look at and be like, damn, which you did. Because as we spoke on it earlier, as far as early influences, but just as there's, there will never be another Missy Elliott, there will never be another Brown Sugar Productions. Five. You feel me? So I think when it comes to it, at the end of the day, we all are treating that inner child because we want to become the change that we wanted to see. Yeah. So that's powerful within itself, yo. And you know what? Speaking of what you just said, like... From the outside area, yeah, I got Missy Elliott and mm-hmm. Alicia Keys and stuff. But really, on the real, I don't really have nobody that I can really go to. Like, That's, on life mm-hmm. shit and music shit, I didn't have another female that I was be able, that I was able to get in touch with mm-hmm. that was doing what I want to do mm-hmm. and be able to ask her, how do I navigate this? I'm going through this. How yes. do, I ain't had that shit. And what you doing right now? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? That. 
in a way. In your way. Yeah. Not in a way, your way. Yeah. Because ain't nobody going to do it like you. Because now any other girls or women that want to, you know, that's inspired or already just want to do that, yeah. they can have me to, you know, I will answer. I will answer your phone call. Yeah. I will answer your DM or your email. No, I could tell. I ain't had that shit. I right. had to really get this shit out the mud, like yeah. figure this shit out on my own. Yeah. And you know what? I think I'm still figuring out how that's going to impact me or how that already impacted me in a way. Yeah. I don't even really know yet, but I know it's a huge, it's a hell of a, I want to say benefit, but then again, like even going through those stages, it didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. just being like, damn, man, like niggas not believing in me. You yeah. know what I mean? Niggas yeah. like, they ain't believe it because they ain't never seen it. Exactly. And that's really the main exactly. <laughs> thing. They like, so what do you do? Right. So how yeah. do you do that? Yeah. And it's like, when you get that so many times, shit, to a person that's really not firm on who they am, that shit can deter them a lot. That's a but fact. for me, I'm real strong on what I believe in. So it's like, I could get that question a hundred times and you can look at me crazy a hundred times, but I'm just like, I'm going mm. to laugh. I'm going to smirk at you. I'm going to smile. Because I was like, you're going to see one day. Come on. Like, you're going to see this shit one day. I ain't even going to trip off like your reactions or whatever. Like, you making it seem like I'm a fool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't even going to trip off that shit. It's like, yeah. you're going to see this shit one day. Yeah, and they saying it now. And they saying it now, and, it, and really, I ain't even, I ain't even got nowhere yet. I have, but you know what? I'm so hard on myself. I can tell. That's my problem I too. Like, that's I'm, why I was gonna <laughs> let you talk, but I was gonna stop your ass at some I'm point. I'm so hard on myself. It's, it's like a gift and a curse. Like sure. sometimes it's good because it's like I keep pushing, and pushing, but sometimes it's like it's just too bad. It's like I don't see what I've done so far. Sometimes. What was the last time you took the time out to really just? Be like, damn. A little bit the other day. Just slightly, but I ain't really We ain't did. talking about a little bit, though. I don't know. I'm talking about fully being present in that moment. I know slight shit and I know a little bit, but like, damn, I came a long ass way. And you actually celebrate and just appreciate that. Celebrating it? I don't know. Really, I mean, appreciating it for the split second. But celebrating, I don't know. You, you know why, probably? Why? Because it's the financial aspect. Like, like my peoples, we ain't struggling, struggling, but we ain't rich. Mm. We we paycheck to paycheck. That's just really what it is. And I don't want to see me or my family like that. I want to go on trips and not have to worry about the money. Yeah, like, every sure. time we talk about something, we want to do something, it's the money that is in the way. Yeah. And I, I, I want to eliminate that. I want to live freely. Like, if you on my Instagram story every day, you will see I post shit that's called the future lifestyle. Yes. I post these modern homes, these mansions, mm. the basement with the pool hall in it. And the, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I post all this shit that I envision and I believe is going to happen in my life. Yeah. And it's called the future lifestyle, which is really on the way. Yeah. But it's just like... I'm really proud of how, how far I've come so far, mm. but I had a friend tell me, like, she was reading some shit. It was like, God going to test your faith mm. before he give you the money and all that shit. He going to test how, how serious you is. Mm -hmm. And I know he know I'm real serious. Yeah. <laughs> so that money, like, you know what I mean? Money ain't everything, but it definitely would change your life. I'm yeah. just tired of seeing me and my family live paycheck to paycheck. So how are you going to act when you finally in a position to live, but you've built so much like some like habits off of being in survival mode. I'm gonna inspire. You gonna inspire? I'm gonna, a, I'm gonna be a hell of a inspiration and motivation to people. Yeah. I just see it. Like I, I'm gonna try not to go crazy with the money. I know my dad is. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga gonna splurge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause like, and that's the thing. He got expensive taste. Yeah. <laughs> on a certain budget that yeah. ain't just ain't making sense yeah. for real, for real. Yeah. That's how I know he meant. To live a certain lifestyle. That's he meant to live that. And yeah. I know I'm meant to live that. So when the time comes, yeah. we're going to be living lavish and we're going to be living large and luxury. Yes. Yeah. So describe lavish, large, and luxury. Oh. First of all, you might want to keep that just in case. You know lavish, what I'm large, large, and luxury. luxury. I'm you know what write that shit down. Yeah, write that down. <laughs> That's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Ideas. You know what I mean? Lavish, large. But what does that look like for you? Man, that's yachts. That's in Miami in the yeah, water. Yeah. That's 
wherever we want to go, we go. We ain't yeah. got to worry about the money. Yeah. Shit, we in Italy somewhere. We love pasta. We love Italian food. Yeah. We going to go to Italy. Like, we just going to live that life. Yeah. We going to be wherever we want to be and just, you know, be able to experience life to its fullest potential and not have to worry about much. Like, life is... Mm. It's always going to be issues. It's always, it's always going to be shit that's yeah. going to happen. But that's yeah. life. Yeah, that's but other fact. than that, I want to live. Mm. You know what I mean? You deserve it. Yeah, you know, I'm living now. I'm not going to say it like again. It's a bit like what you're saying. Appreciating everything right now. Mm. I'm definitely doing that. But I have goals. You want more? I want more. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. And I put that shit on my story the other day. I was like, I'm not scared to dream big. Yeah. I'm not scared of that shit. Yeah. Some people scared. I'm not scared. Yeah. I'm going to dream real fucking big. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be scared to say what I want. Swear to God. Because the hardest part that's out the way is realizing anything that you ain't never have and realizing you got to do some shit you ain't never done. Mm -hmm. Are you set? Facts. Locked and loaded. Damn. This we is done. huge, man. Come on. We this is a moment. Right I'm just saying, this is a moment. I can't wait until... You know what I mean? When we at that point in our lives to where niggas can look back and be like, damn, you know, I pull up to the garden. You feel me? I might pick up some vegetables. <laughs> you might be making hot sauce at that point. Ain't Who knows? No you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just pull up and I'll be like, hey, yo, I'm about to do my usual pickup. You feel me? Okay, uh -huh. whoop, whoop, chop it up. Damn, you remember we was on the couch? And this, this, this. That's what it's about, like, yo. You remember those moments? Come on. That's, that's what it's about. It and I think um, that's why I really like appreciate what you do because you really bring people alongside of your journey. I do. You know what I mean? But you create your own narrative and story going back to what I was saying about the intros. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But you do that with life. Yeah. You feel I'm what glad I'm that saying? you see that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Really, you open my eyes to a different aspect of it because this is like, like I'm saying, it's just a flow happening. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even realize what's happening, but I love when other people are really paying attention and they can really be like, this is what I see. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, I ain't never really looked at it like that. Right, right. So I will, this is what I will say, though, and this is coming from the heart. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, be more gentle with yourself. Yeah, I got to, man. I'm so hard on my soul. Yeah, I'm not saying don't be hard. I have to have a good balance. But though. just be more gentle. Like, when you do that self-talk, don't say don't be hard. Don't be hard because your brain still hears hard. Mm -hmm. Just be like, all right, let me be more gentle with myself. The brain's going to hear gentle. Dig what I'm saying? Because you're already a sponge. You're a quick learner. Yeah. Very simple, but still complex. Don't get me wrong. But, like... You, you know what I'm saying? Routine, structure. You feel me? You already got your flow. So, that self-talk, man. Just be more gentle with yourself. I got to be. Yeah. I got to be. Because I ain't going to lie. Like, I did think, sit back and look the other day. And I'm like, damn, I've came a long way. That's a fact. Last Friday, I did this event. Have you heard of the gathering spot? Hell yeah. Bet. Okay. So, I did an event at the DC's um, the gathering spot. Oh, word. And I kind of was like a little DJ or whatever. Like, yeah. the thing was sampled music, and they was giving out sampled drinks and sampled food. Okay. And when I set up, I looked at the screen by the bar, and mm. it said Brown Sugar Productions. Wow. That shit hit me hard. I was like, yo, I've came so wow. far from people laughing at my name yeah. and just not believing. Yeah. Just like, now... I'm doing my thing. I'm getting paid to do it. And I look up at the screen and it say my name. Wow. That shit hit me real hard. I was like, this is how you know. Like, I, I'm making a hell of a progress. It's a dog out there? Yeah, it's some neighbor's dog. Oh. You about to say, I just a big ass dog. I'm well, like, what? Y'all got dogs running around? I was like, he's big as shit, too. Oh, yeah, nah, that's the neighbor's dog. He cool as hell. But yeah, I'm just. You know, I'm grateful of how far I've come, and I ain't, I got a long way to go. This yeah. is really just the beginning, beginning right yeah. now. But I see what you're saying, though, as far as you still having the moments, but it's very short-lived. But, yeah. like, friend to friend, um, I know we just met for the pod mm -hmm. and shit, but, like, I'm the type of person to where I like to make the impact outside of the, you know what I mean, like the professionalism or just the moment of, where niggas is doing what they got to do. I like to actually genuinely build relationships and see, like, all right, we both kindred spirits. How can we make this place a better place mm -hmm. with our skill sets? 
Fact. You know what I'm saying? Fact. So I've noticed how you say even in those little moments that's still pivotal, but like small moments of just seeing your name on the screen, you don't want to get too caught up in it. Cause like the gift and the curse, it's like you know if I like get <laughs> caught up in that moment, the momentum stops. Right, I might be content, and I don't. And that's my mm-hmm. thing. I don't never want to be con. I don't want to say never, never, but yeah, I'm not trying to be content right now. Have you now. seen people who's content and kind of got to see vicariously through that on what it looks like? Maybe a little bit. Mm-hmm. Maybe they got caught up in a, a big. Um, opportunity they had yeah. and they just was yeah yeah they was just going off that Word. but like i look at big opportunities it's like oh we gotta keep going yeah. like let's put the pedal to the metal for real for real now because we getting here we doing this yeah like we gotta keep keep rising and keep moving yeah. and yeah keep inspiring that's yeah. how i look at it but i i've definitely came across people that just like yeah, they kind of yeah. got content. It was just like, okay, mm-hmm. shit, I'm good, kind of. But yeah. then they want more, yeah. but they get so caught up yeah. in that in that moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got one last question. Yeah. So my last question before I get to the last segment. Okay. Um, seeing that you're driven, and I promise you, like I said, this is coming from the heart. This is never on no <laughs> like dim your light, nigga. Da, da, da. No, we gonna shine our lights in unison. You feel me? Mm-hmm. What I wanted to ask was, when it comes to your overall journey. Oh yeah, let me get some more. Yeah, let's pull it up. This for us right now. Brief intermission. You know what I mean? Can we put this on camera? There's already one camera, really. Cut the check, Remy. Cut the check. You know what I'm saying? You know what? Side note, before you say what you say. Go ahead. I want to like. I want to be a sponsor for like a brown liquor. It's brown sugar. And I love brown look anyway. Yeah. No shit gonna happen. And I used to tell myself when I was really smoking heavy, mm-hmm. I want to have my own flavor backwards. Mm-hmm. It'll be called brown sugar, but it's not even gonna be what you expect. It's not. It's not gonna be no real cinnamon sweet toast shit. crunch type shit. But it's not gonna taste too sweet. Right. Like it's not gonna be like niggas gonna be like this shit about to be sweet. But when they really roll it and taste it, it's gonna mm-hmm. be like the Smooth. perfect, the perfect combination of mm-hmm. like you know what I mean. That's a side note because I just you know just heard what you said I'm about there the with you. You should also get into edibles, mm-hmm. bakery. Yeah, because like be you're a universal brand. Yeah. So with that, you could get the aunties, the grandmas, grandpas, the kids. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Before we even get to the million dollar ideas, because that's what niggas is truly about. You mm-hmm. feel me? And execution behind them ideas. You dig? Um. My question to you is: as driven as you are. Right, yeah, as focused, the tunnel vision, just the hunger, you see what I'm saying, like the 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 inspiration, the motivation, right, what does it look like today Sean mm-hmm. a k a brown sugar productions, right, but mainly day Sean, what does your recharge time look like for you? Going out, doing all these things, you exerting a oh. lot of energy, <laughs> my nigga. You exerting a lot of energy. No bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So what do you do when you need that recharge time? I be chilling like shit. I am a homebody yeah. all the way. Yeah. <laughs> and I know, I don't know if you've seen the post. It was like, I think they put Denzel Washington on the junk. It was like when I go out with a bunch of people, I got to just like go back and recharge yeah. some people. Yeah. I swear I'm like that. Like I've yeah. always been a homebody. Like mm. if it's 100 degrees outside, I'm in the house. And Come on. In the AC. AC. I'm I'm watching some, even yeah. I'm making beats, I probably do it, you know, a moment with that, then I'm gonna watch it, then I'm gonna cook some food, Come then on. I'm gonna chill, play the video game. I'm really that. Like yeah. I play video games, yeah. I play pool, like Come I on. do all that little chill shit, but I am a home body. Yeah. So yeah, recharging for me is like I'm in a room by myself. I'm binge watching something. Come on. I'm chilling on that. Yeah. I'm Creating some music. I'm yeah. chilling on that. I'm making some good. I'm a real foodie. Come on. I'm making some good food. Yeah. I'm chilling on that. But I'm, I'm in the house. Yeah. Like, I can't be. Uh, at this moment, I want to be around a bunch of people. Hell nah. <laughs> Hell nah. That's, that's what a recharge looks mm. like for brown sugar or Deshaun. How you look at it. Yeah. yeah. Nah, but you know you know why I asked specifically mm. for Deshaun. Because I really want the audience and the people to get to know you you yeah. know what i mean like it don't matter like yes 
People like us, you feel me, like the brands are the byproducts. Certain people, sometimes it might be somebody who they want to be, but they may not be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? All to egos, per se, right? Mm-hmm. However people want to perceive it. But when you have an opportunity in a safe space to where you can kind of get to know the person, it helps with the why mm-hmm. of what it is that they do. So us just sitting here chopping it up, you feel me, on some natural shit, we basically planting seeds moving forward. Really? You dig what I'm saying? Really? Because now people are seeing, like, different networks come together and really just seeing, like, your audience, your people, your supporters, they get to see you more so on a personal level. And you know what I mean? And they really get to see, like, oh, shit, like... You, she cool as fuck, nigga. Like, oh, you shoot pool? Bet. Come <laughs> in my city, nigga. We gonna shoot some pool type shit. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, that's yeah. That's what it's truly about because we lack in human connection nowadays. We are. You know what I mean? We are, we are. And we know how to play the game when it comes to social media, but what helps us is the authenticity because mm-hmm. it matches in person. It matches in the vibe. Just yeah. like you were saying earlier of... You know what I mean? Being in a woman with a room full of niggas. Like, excuse my language, but still, like... Knowing how to maneuver, knowing how to delegate, knowing how to, like, you feel me, figure it out to where now you're being in a space to where it doesn't matter if it's just men, doesn't matter if it's just women, regardless, I'm still going to speak up for myself. And you know what, too? That brings me to something I thought about. You got certain, I don't even know if to call them producers or beat makers, going back to the beat maker shit I said, but, like, people, certain beat makers or producers online. Mm. A lot of them like make a lot of money from selling beats online. Yeah. But mm. they lack like personal connection. I'll say like connection. They might yeah. they might make thousands of thousands of dollars mm. each month online for selling beats, but you invite them to the studio, they might be so fucking standoffish and anti and weird as hell. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's real weird, but it's like with me. Yeah. Like I try, I tried everything, so I tried being one of them producers on like B stars and selling beats. Yeah. It worked out a little bit, but yeah. I just realized it's not me. Like I'm the producer that's in person. I'm mm. in the studio with you. I'm gonna play you some shit, and you gonna feel it off the energy and the vibe, and you gonna mm. hop on that job. Mm. That's how I make my like mm. all my um placements and shit with artists is in person. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I want to see more of? Yeah. I want to see like that process from a oh, visual yeah. perspective. Uh-huh. Cause getting to know you now, I see how you carry yourself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, I really would just love to see that in action. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just that. because, like, I feel like it'll really help show people and reinforce people how we can kind of finesse the social media. Everybody needs to see it. If it didn't happen, you ain't bullshit. It didn't happen. All that bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. When we can keep the memories for ourselves, we're not even pressed on trying to showcase it or like advertise it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I really would love to see more of your process when it comes to you yourself, yeah. when it comes to other artists, other creators, other producers. Mm-hmm. I want to see that. As a, fan, as a fan, as a fan, I want to see you that. I'm said that, yeah, because, yeah. you know, and I'm going to be honest, like, right now, mm-hmm. I know people that got this huge team, they got a manager, they got this and that. I don't have that. Like, if yeah. anything, I have a huge support system. Exactly. But I That's don't more have powerful, though. a manager and a one videographer I can go to and one social media person and a mm. PR like, I don't have that yet. So, I really be having all them ideas in my mind, but I, I hate getting overwhelmed. Like, Start with your phone. Yeah. Well, like, what you mean? Just like. Bro, just, okay, boom. Podcast, for example. Mm-hmm. I got this shit off Vista Print. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. We're using my couch in my living room. Motherfucking table where you can see it done been through some things. <laughs> Tripod. My cell phone. Wireless lavalier mics on Amazon. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Ring light. Boom. I get you, but it'd be so much shit. I I I do, cause again. Right. But still, okay, just even like this, bro. Just on even on some shit. Like mm-hmm. even it doesn't have to be this. I was just using this as an example. No, I get what you're saying. I like, get what you're you saying. Know, niggas be using the 4K it, you, cameras. You pretty and, much saying it's it's simple. Just do it, right? right? So you say you that. don't have enough time, right? But you have time for when you make the beats, correct? Like let's say, boom, work day. You go home, 
at some point you making beats. Ain't no way around. Lie to me now. But you know what it is though. What I, is get, it? I already get you. I already know what you're going. Break it down. Break it's it down. Patience for me. Patience of what? <laughs> of doing the other things outside of presenting. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That, like, makes that makes sense. Yo, do I got the patience to sit here? I respect here that. I respect and put that. this damn camera yeah. up and have to go back and forth and do different yeah. things. Like yeah. my patience level. I respect that. Even That's now, real. like again, I'm doing everything. Yeah. And I talked to a mentor about it. She was like, "You got to though. Like you gotta do all this shit. So when you hire somebody, yeah, you know what the fuck they doing. Exactly. You already, you know what I mean. But, but like you said, like, the Bare minimum, stage. the basics. That's it. This is like, man, like my patience level with, with all the other shit be so much. And I hate getting overwhelmed yeah. with doing like, it's like, all right, I'm working on this project. I'm trying to make these beats, but I still need to be emailing these people about this. Yeah. I still need to be doing this. It's just like, oh my God, it becomes so much. But again, like I tell people, should it be excuses? Like, I don't want to make it seem like it's an excuse. Cause I need to be doing it at least right now, but then I also need to be finding some people that's gonna help me do that shit so I can just flourish. No, I I respect you because you were honest about it. I'm real honest. Like about niggas I ain't is gonna, gonna cap with you. You feel me? Like <laughs> niggas is gonna be quick to bullshit about that. I ain't gonna cap yeah. with you. I know it could sound like an excuse, but it's just like my mm. patience with certain shit. Be it's so valid though. No, nah, it's valid. <laughs> it's valid because not a lot of people even admit that. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. So I even respect for even saying that. Damn, nigga, we can go all day. I know. This is a great conversation. Just slight shit. Just slight shit. But is there any last thing you would like to say? Let people know how they can reach you. Yeah. Tap into. You know what I mean? Just give them the spiel real quick. Definitely. Look, y'all. Brown Sugar Productions. Come on. You can visit my website, brownsugarprod.com. Yes. Learn all about me and what I do and where I come from and come my on. influences and how I came about about doing this. Yeah. Um, you're definitely going to see me real soon. Wake it up. Doing my thing and inspiring and influencing how I, you know, see, put, and all of that. And then follow me on Instagram at brown sugar, P R O D underscore. Talk your just shit. To keep up with me. Just to keep up with brown sugar and just see what I got going on. You know what I mean? I love the Carolinas. Like, Come on. I done grew up here so much. Like, my grandmother calls me a city girl with Southern charm. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, no bullshit. When she said that, I was like, okay, yeah, we about to, yeah, we about to use that. Hey, a yo, city girl with southern, southern charm. charm. I ain't gonna never forget when she said that. Good. And that's real shit. Wow. Like what she was just saying, my inst, like internally, yeah. I'm southern as hell. Outside, I'm city as hell. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm from DC all that's day. I'm from up north all day. But yeah. internally, even the way I. Everything, even the way I eat, I yeah. garden. Yes. I do all this shit. That's yes. just like, that's my deep roots, for real, for that's real. That's a fact. So, yeah, y'all wow. just keep it touching me. Just, you know what I mean? Like, if you ain't hip now, you definitely going to get hip from Come this on. interview and beyond. So, Come on. let's get it. We a here. city girl with a southern charm. Oh. That's probably going to be the next tape. What's up? <laughs> hey, if you need an A&R, let me know. I got you. I'll help you out with that shit. <laughs> Charge, you know I what got I'm you. Collective bargaining, that's what I'm about. Niggas ain't got it. <laughs> we can do the bread later. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But nah, for real. Love, love for yo. Real. For real. Thank you so much for coming. You Thank feel you for me? Come on. Me. Love, as always. Bro, she Durr. What's up, Durr? I'm just saying, y'all. She done now? pulled up home. We're going to have to show her a good time. Great. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some slight.